Good morning. Welcome to Fulton First United Methodist Church. My name is Paul Mandart. My wife and I, Alyssa, will be your worship leaders this morning as we celebrate the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Good morning. We have some announcements and acknowledgements. If anyone has any announcements, please make your way to the front at this time. Yes. Good now? Okay, there we go. Hello, now you can hear me. Okay, can you hear me now? Um, so, hello, my name is Emily Carrasquillo. I am the chorus director, and I am now the music teacher. I've had my first half a week of school, and I'm exhausted, um, but it's super fun, so very grateful. But um, I just wanted to say we're having choir again Thursday at 6.30 this week. After that, we're gonna meet um, after church on Sundays to practice, so that way I can have a little more time on the weekdays. Um, and I think that's it. So enjoy the choir today. Yay, they're back. Hello, I'm Karen Brungard, and my mom is Pauline Rasbeck. And people have been asking about her because she was supposed to have surgery for her hip. But she contacted COVID from my older brother. My dad and I and my husband didn't seem to uh, contact it. We're healthy. And she, it's been more than 10 days and she's fine. She got the medication right away that the Paxlova that um, helped her. But in her surgery will be October 18th. My husband's like, hurry up. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Anyway, uh, by the way, there are a lot of tomatoes out there, Pat. I picked a bunch yesterday. There's still a pack of them there. Very <laughs> pro prolific. Anyway. Um, there's garden produce out there, and uh, feel free to take, and if any of you are around during the week and you want to go in the garden and pick, uh, there's still a lot of squash and such, and I haven't gotten to it all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, this week, Monday, September 12th, there's prayer gathering uh, meeting at 7 p.m. Tuesday the 13th, SPPRC meets at 7 p.m. Wednesday the 14th, the Chosen Bible Study at 6.30 p.m. And Thursday the 15th, Choir Rehearsal at 6.30 p.m. Also, um, if you can please see that uh, AA meetings in Al-Anon, you can see the times. Um, our web sponsors, the Kaza family, in honor of Kelly Kaza's 21st birthday on the 16th. Liz and Chuck Race in honor of their granddaughter Brooke and Riley on their sixth birthday. Liz's birthday was on the ninth. Happy birthday. Don Diak in honor of S Sue Kasparik and Linda Cohen for their ministry, counting the, uh, the offering each, each week and all of the others' uh, support that they give our church. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, birthdays of the week, we have uh, several, if you can look in the bulletin, and we're celebrating their birthdays, too. Thank you. Um, we ask all to stand for the ringing of the bells and the lighting of the altar, altar candles, please.
Thank you, Don. Thank you. We will now have our call to worship, an invitation to Christ. And if you could please read along with me. Come, my light, and illumine my darkness. Come, my light, and revive me from death. Come, my physician, and heal my wounds. Come, flame of divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins, kindling my heart with the flames of thy love. Come, my king, sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there. For thou alone art my King and my Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. And we'll now have a hymn, Great is the Lord. Shepherding God, shepherding God, gather us into your presence as we come to worship, worship this day. Transform us into your people through the mighty power of your spirit. Rescue us with your endless patience that we may become instruments of mercy and grace to help others find their way home. In your mercy and grace we pray in the name of Jesus, amen. Our reading this morning is taken from the book of Genesis, verse 1 through 19. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. 
You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I am in the garden, and I am afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman put you here with me. She gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is it you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will make pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. You desire, your desire for your husband, and, your, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you, th through painful toil, you will eat food from it all days of your life. It, it will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat from the plants of the field. But the sweat, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since it what you were taken from dust you are, and dust you will return. The, Lord, the word of the Lord and people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We will now have our offertory. Thank you, generous God of grace, for pouring your love and abundance so freely upon us. Pour the same love and abundance upon the gifts we now return to you, that they may become signs of grace and instruments of love to bring the world back home to you. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Will you be loyal to the universal, I'm sorry, to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen it in your ministry? I will. I will. Congregation, members of the household of God, I commend them to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And I'm going to invite you to read that with me again. I believe we're in page 30. 38. 38. Everybody on the hymnal, and I apologize, I was not aware that it wasn't showing behind me. Everybody, please open your hymnal on page 38, because that is very important for us to remember and realize that this ceremony is something for all of us to be refreshed on as members of Christ Church. And when I say Christ Church, I mean church with a capital C, people that belong to God, the people of God. This is not about a denomination per se. This is not about the United Methodist Church itself alone. This is about who we serve and who we are for. So can you please read that portion with me again as members together? And we read it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As members together with you, in the, the body, body of Christ, Christ. you have it? Mm -hmm. As members together with, with you, you in the body of Christ, Christ and in, in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministry of the Church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, and our that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. May the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace forever. I present to you your new member, Daddy Warner. Yeah. Yeah. And before we move forward, I wanted to say something quick. Today represents many things. We are delighted that we were able to present that as a member, but we also celebrate grandparents. So I wanted to take a minute and say, if you're a grandparent, could you please stand? Just one minute. Grandparents. Okay. Nice try, Emily. <laughs> 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 I'm a grandchild. Yeah, I'm a grandchild. Only of cats. I'm a too. Now it looks like I have more than 20. I brought 20 baggies to share, so maybe one can go for a household. But I wanted to appreciate you out loud and in front of the household of God and the presence of God. Because what you do means a lot. And what you do brings glory to the name of God. How you bring your grandchildren to church is a great blessing to us as a family. So I wanted to acknowledge what you do and I wanted to commend you in keeping up the great work for God's glory. And I'd like to pray for you. Holy God, I am before you at this hour, giving you praise and honor and thanking you for the privilege of these brothers and sisters that they have to have grandchildren and great-grandchildren, Lord. Thank you for blessing them with this beautiful extended family, and thank you for the gifts that you have given them to be a blessing to these children, Lord. I pray that you use them for your glory to leave a legacy of your name, of your love, of your mercies in the lives of their grandchildren, Lord, and that they may resemble the love of Christ in the way that they treat them, Lord God. Be glorified in each of these households, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I do have daddy, so I'm sorry. Just explain will happen for me. You may be seated. Thank you, Matthew.
Hello, 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 hello. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. Great. The numbers are getting bigger. All right. <laughs> and speaking of young ones, I'd like to give a shout out to our son Chris in the back for helping Dan out today with the with the A V section. Okay, how's everybody today? All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about faith. Does anybody know what faith means? Like believing in something and not like ever non believing, you like always believe in that thing. Perfect. Anybody else? Faith is trusting or believing in something or someone, even though we can't see them. Mm hmm. What happened in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago? Nobody? Jesus was born. How do we know this? Because he was real. And people told stories. Mm -hmm. Was any of you there? Were any, any of you there 2,000 years ago? I know I wasn't. Al, Al might have been, I'm not sure. He might have missed it by a year or two, but he might have been. <laughs> we believe this because the Bible tells us about it, and we have faith. Friends and family tell us about it, and stories have been passed down from generations to generations in the Bible, telling us all about the birth of Jesus even though none of us were there. What happened 33 years after Jesus was born? Science no. 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 Died. Jesus, died, Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday and then was resurrected on Easter Sunday, came, back, came back from the dead. None of us were here either for that. But we believe because we have faith. 2,000 years later, September 11, 2001, 
21 years ago. I don't think any of you were 21 years ago. No? no? I know what happened. What happened? 9-11. Mm-hmm. I was around then. That's because I'm an old guy. <laughs> but none of you were even born yet. It was a beautiful, warm, sunny day in New York City. And I worked in the World Trade Center. There were some very bad people who wanted to do bad things and hurt a lot of people by flying airplanes into those buildings. I was in one of those buildings when the airplane hit it. And I was very afraid. But I immediately started praying to God and asking for help. I had faith that God would help me and all the other people around me. God and a lot of brave people helped get me and a lot and lots and lots of other workers safely out of the building. Thank you, Mm-hmm. I walked for about seven miles along with thousands of other people. And I walked for four hours. And I met my daddy, who was out looking for me. I had faith that everything would be OK. Even though a lot of people were hurt on that day, and many even died, faith and prayer brought thousands of people home safely to their families. Fourteen years later, to that very day, on September 11, 2015, my daddy died. That wonderful, brave man who helped lead me to safety was welcomed into the safety and love of God in heaven. So through faith and love for God, we must always remember that he will always be there for us. Now, if we could just bow our heads for a little prayer. Father, we pray for all of the people who lost loved ones on September 11, 2001. Comfort them and continue to guide them in your hope. Help us to honor the lives of those who died and continue to suffer through our thoughts and our actions and grant them the happiness and joy of heaven with you. Fill us with love and forgiveness and help us to live peacefully with each other. As we see pictures and hear memories of the suffering and confusion of September 11th, help us to remember all the good that you have put in your world. Help us most of all to share your love and promises with those we meet that are suffering and confused. Amen. Okay, Maddie's waiting in the back for all you guys. Thank you, and God bless you all.
promise that we have in our Christ, in our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let me get my page together here. Realizing today marks the 21st anniversary of the sad and tragic Al-Qaeda terrorist attacks upon our World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the U.S. Capitol is shocking. In 2001, 2,977 victims died and 25,000 people were injured. Please take a moment with me to uplift save survivors and those who are still mourning their loved ones to Almighty God in prayer. Oh God, you are the hope for all the ends of the earth the God of the spirits of all flesh. Hear our humble intercession for all races and families on earth, that you will turn our, our, all of our hearts to yourself. Remove from our minds hatred, prejudice, and contempt for those who are not of our own race or color, class, or creed, that departing from everything that estranges and divides, we may be by you brought into unity of spirit in the bond of peace. To Christ our Lord, amen. Last week we introduced a reflection series, learning from the past, living in the present, and preparing for the future, focusing on three things. Number one, the Wesleyan quadrilateral, 
description, tradition, reason, and experience. Number two, the great impact God's word, the Bible, has in our lives. And number three, the value of us sharing his story with the generations that come after us. Today, as we weigh all of the events that are unfolding around us, like the joy of our salvation and receiving a new member into our congregation, remembering those who died and were injured at the 2001 terrorist attacks, Grandparents' Day, the situation with Ukraine and Russia, the passing of Queen Elizabeth II and the coronation of King Charles, the issues within our government. There's so much. Let us take a closer look and observe how all of these events really are related. The commonality in these events is that actions were taken and consequences followed. For example, one day you said, yes, I accept you as my Lord and Savior to Jesus, and are now rejoicing with the reality that in the ups and downs of life, Jesus is walking alongside you, giving you peace and providing you for the needs that you and your family may have as you trust in him. Another example, today our brother Dan took a step of faith and transferred his membership to this congregation, reminding each of us that we made a pact with God as a church. And again, I say a church with a capital C, which means the people of God, not to a denomination, but we made a pact with our heavenly father, our Lord, our God. We promised to participate in ministry by prayers, by presence, by gifts, by witness, by service, which means that we are promising to be fully devout, devoted and committed to serving God and neighbor. The passing of Queen Elizabeth II causes me to consider our lesson for today, focusing on actions and consequences. Queen Elizabeth II made the choice to love God and neighbor above all, and to follow God's commands as a leader. The consequences of her choice was that she enjoyed many decades of mutual respect and love from those who followed her. Adam and Eve, on the other hand, allowed the serpent to fool them into believing that they could be like God and disobeyed God's commands. In return, they were removed from the Garden of Eden and suffered painful consequences. Obedience to God is full submission to God's authority. It is wholehearted compliance and observance of God's commands. Not halfway, but fully following his precepts and laws, not partially, but completely. King Saul and King David are often considered opposite in regards to obedience. King Saul and King David mark, show the mark of what full obedience to God is and what partial commitment is. David made great efforts to stay under God's will, to follow God's commands fully, and to live a godly life. Saul, however, often chose to follow God's commands partially, follow his directions as he felt fit, leaning more in his own understanding rather than in trusting God, as we read in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. More details can be found in First and Second Samuel about the lives of King David and King Saul. Allow yourself a moment to immerse in God's word and in the truth behind being obedient to God by setting some time aside to read 1 and 2 Samuel this week. The general concept of obedience in the Old Testament and New Testament relates to hearing. Like the scripture says in many times, Jesus says, those who have 
ears to hear, let them hear what the, what the Lord is saying. So the concept of obedience relates to hearing, to hearkening to higher authority. One of the Greek terms for obedience in the Bible conveys the idea of positioning oneself under someone by submitting to their authority and command. Another Greek word for obey in the New Testament means to trust. According to Holman's Illustrated Bible Dictionary, a definition of biblical obedience is to hear God's word and act accordingly. To hear and act accordingly. To be hearers and doers of that word. The Eardman's Bible Dictionary states that true hearing or obedience involves the physical hearing that inspires the hearer and belief and a belief of trust that in turn motivates the hearer to act in accordance with the speaker's desires. I'll say that again. The Eardman's Bible Dictionary states that true hearing or obedience involves the physical hearing that inspires the hearer and a belief or trust that in turn motivates the hearer to act in accordance with the speaker's desires. Thus, biblical obedience to God means to hear, trust, submit, and surrender to God in his word, seeking God's wisdom, seeking God's kingdom and God's righteousness, rather than trying to establish our own kingdom or becoming self-righteous. Trusting that God will give us the other things that we need as well. The truth is that actions have consequences. And these have a lasting impact on the rest of our lives. Since there is no rest, no reset, no undo, no edit button in life. You and I are one, responsible for our actions. Two, you and I have free will to choose these actions that we take. Three, you and I are not free from the consequences that they might bring, positive or negative. And four, you and I must recognize that doing nothing is a form of action. The lectionary scriptures for today also add valuable insight for our focus. The prophet Jeremiah invites us to return to the Lord to put our detestable idols out of our sight and to no longer go astray. Wow, that word makes me tremble inside. Return to the Lord, put your detestable idols out of your sight and no longer go astray. In my understanding, return to the Lord means to come back, to surrender all to God's service just like the prodigal son did when he returned to his father. He was willing to become a servant. He didn't care about his stat, um, status. He didn't care about his lineage. He just wanted to be under the shadow, on, under the shelter of his father. Recognizing that we do not deserve God's mercies and grace, and yet they are freely given and endlessly provided for each of us. To put detestable idols out of our sight means to remove things and persons that separate us from God's love and service from our lives and to give God the first place in our hearts once again. Maybe unwillingly, we have allowed things, possessions, positions, or even beloved people to get in our way of having Christ being the center of our joy, the center of our peace, the center of our existence. And we have then made this thing, this position, this possession, this person a priority, an idol before God. So we are invited to no longer put these idols before us, but to seek him first and know again that everything else will be given to us as well. Last but not least, this scripture in Jeremiah chapter 4 invites us to no longer go astray, and that has to do 
with making an intentional effort to move forward and see no more. Taking one day at a time and leaning on God's grace. Beloved, the truth of the matter is that the battle belongs to the Lord. We cannot overcome sin on our own strength. We cannot let go of our idols on our own strength. We can no longer choose to go astray on our own terms. We need the assistance of the Holy Spirit. At times we might feel as we are no good or even question that God has a plan for our lives. But the Apostle Paul assures us saying, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given who has given me strength because he considered me faithful. So he appointed me to ministry, even though I used to speak against him, attack his people, and I was proud. But I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and without faith. Our Lord's favor poured all over me, along with the faithfulness and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is reliable and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the biggest sinner of all. But this is why I was shown mercy, so that Christ could show his endless patience to me first of all, so I am an example for those who are going to believe in him for eternal life. 1 Timothy 1, 12 to 16. Like Queen Elizabeth, each of us may have lived many experiences in different situations. May we learn from our mistakes and continue to move forward, seeking in the word of God and following the examples around us. Queen Elizabeth, for example, she said, the teachings of Christ and my own personal accountability before God provide a framework in which I try to lead my life. And this was taken from the 2000 Christmas broadcast. My friends, allow today to be your new beginning in Christ. Say no to evil deeds and to the desires of the flesh and return to your God. God's mercy and grace are available for you. Jesus said, look, I'm standing at the door and knocking. If any may hear my voice, voice and open the door, I will come in to be with them and will have dinner with them and they will have dinner with me. Revelations 3.20. Your Lord and Savior is calling you. Come just as you are. Come and hear the Spirit call. Come just as you are. Come and see, come receive everlasting life. And I'd like to read something from Ezekiel chapter 33, in case you're thinking, who does she think she is to be telling me this and that? Let me tell you who I am in the name of Jesus. The scripture tells me in Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 6, the Lord spoke to me, mortal man, he said, Tell your people what happens when I bring war to a land. The people of that country chose one of their number to be a watchman. When he sees the enemy approaching, he sounds the alarm to warn everyone. If someone hears it but pays no attention and the enemy comes and kills him, then he is to blame for his own death. His death is in his own fault because he paid no attention to the warning. If he had paid attention, he could have escaped. If, however, the watchman, or watchwoman in my case, sees the enemy coming and does not sound the alarm, the enemy will come and kill those sinners. But I will hold the watchman responsible for their death. So I have been called by God to proclaim the liberation that we can receive through Jesus Christ. Come just as you are. Continually watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, 
for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. Watch your habits, for they become your character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Come back to Jesus and live forevermore. God bless you. Lord God, we come before your presence exalting you and thanking you because your word is so timely. These scriptures were selected at the last month, during the last month and put together the last week of August. Yet you know what happens in our hearts and you know our future, you know our day-to-day -day activities and especially, Lord, you know our hearts and our minds. I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit may take a hold of us and deeply search us and help us reveal to ourselves our realities before you, God, that we may no longer live in sin willingly, God, but that we may surrender to you and ask for forgiveness and come back at your feet to receive your redemption, Lord. Heal us from within, Lord God, that we may leave our burdens at your feet, that we may leave our past at your feet, that we may leave our suffering at your feet and trust, Lord God, that you will restore us and renew us and complete what you have started in us, Lord. Have your way in our lives, Lord Jesus. Revisit our hearts and, and strengthen us in faith that we may believe in you even when we don't see the path in front of us, Lord that we may be restored by your spirit, Lord God, and no longer confirm to the patterns of this world, Lord Jesus. Help us to follow you, even if we have to stand alone by ourselves, knowing that you are with us. We don't see you, yet you are with us. By faith we receive it, and thank you, Lord, for the things that you will do. Thank you for the blessings that you have given us already. And thank you for the ways that you will be glorified in our lives as we stand firm and say no to evil for the glory of your name. Lord, I pray that you give strength to my brothers and sisters who might be struggling internally with sins that are out of their control to, to let go of, Lord God. Some have extended a desire, but they don't know how to cope with removing this from their path. Lord, I pray for your guidance. I pray for your spirit to fight their fight, Lord God, and give them the victory for the glory and honor of your name. Be exalted in each of our lives, I pray in Jesus' name. And I also lift up Jeanette, Bill Mix, as she's hospitalized, Lord God. You know her needs, and you know the people that are taking care of her situation. In the hospital, God, I pray for your blessings upon each of the medical staff. And I pray that you provide Richard and Nancy the strength to continue to pray for her and believe that you will be glorified. We also lift up Carolyn's sister, Michelle, as she's having surgery on Tuesday, Lord God. We pray for you to be magnified in the circumstances and for your hands to be the ones that move the surgeons to do what needs to do and give the surgeons the wisdom to move forward, Lord God. We pray for Kayla and Crystal and each of the lives of the people in this sanctuary, Lord. Not only that, but we extend your blessings to the people that are listening online, Lord God, those that are away from this country, Lord. I pray for your blessings upon them as well. And we pray for you to be magnified every day of our lives, Lord God, that we may turn to you and realize that we cannot do it on our own every step of the way. In Jesus' name, we pray, thanking him that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Glory to God. We'd like to close singing the hymn, Blessed Assurance, for the glory and honor of our Lord.
Jesus. Found by God. Loved by Christ. We go now to share Christ's love with the world. Blessed by the Spirit. We go now to bless others with mercy and grace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I guess only 20. 